Zach's chief equity strategist and economist John Blank talks with me now about the retail sector in light of the Delta variant. John, even though Delta is in some ways helping to slow the economic recovery, overall, retail sales for July fell just over 1% and consumer sentiment slipped in the early part of this month. But in spite of that, retail earnings reports overall came in strong. So is retail spending what's underpinning this economy? Absolutely, Terry. I think you've got to realize that people have really gotten um, you know, religion around buying on the internet, and they have gotten comfortable going into stores in mass. And it is no longer reflecting itself as strongly with people with vaccinations in terms of retail sales. I do think it's hurting jobs. I think people permanently staying in close space to work have a different um, appraisal of this issue rather than the, the retailer. You got to remember, all you got to do for a retailer is either buy at home and have it delivered to you, which is no risk to you, or go into a store for 15 minutes and mask up. And that's just a different choice than, than a job person is making. Will the upcoming holiday shopping season tell the definitive story on retail and the economy for this year? Absolutely, Terry. This is always the case that, that the holiday season is going to you know, perk up and be a dominant factor. And I really do think it's going to work out just fine this year. What impact, if any, do you see Tropical Storm Henri having on earnings and the economy going forward? Well, Henri has turned out to you know not create as much havoc in the Northeast as people thought. It's still August, so it's mostly rain and not snow. I think I would really change that tune if it had gotten into a blizzard up there. Uh, but the real story is what other hurricanes are going to show up this fall. You get a big one tearing through the south. Uh, again, that can be headline risk, and that can really dent uh, the closure of a lot of stores down there. So what are the key stock market concerns now, and what has already been baked into the cake? Well, Terry, here's the thing. Uh, my fair value at an 18 forward PE on current earnings looking forward 12 months is 4320 and I've got an S&P 500 right now this morning, which is looking at 4,500 even. So the market is trading acts actually right at 4,500. So even under my fair value appraisal, this market's four, five, six percent ahead of itself. Um, and the market simply doesn't care. Uh, I would point out to anybody who's being a genius like I just showed you that I'm not a genius because. The genius is the one who's riding the stock market up. It's still a bull market. It's still a trend-following market. And it's still a Fed liquidity-driven market. And frankly, the 12-month forward look ahead on the bottoms up, that's not me, is 4,900. So if you want uh, the right assessment, you've got to decide the market's not stupid. And it, it's still betting on a stronger market than I can come up with fair value. So at the end of the day, it's bull market, Terry. So is the stock market as high as it is due to fundamentals driving it? No, it's all Fed liquidity and also a, a real ability for major uh, FANG stocks to capture market share in this, this remote working COVID environment. They were so well positioned in the major segments of the, the internet cloud-based economy and that they, when that surged, they really took share and they really built businesses. And those are in market cap weighted indices like the, the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ, they are lifting the overall valuations far in excess of what people would think. So my 18 PE, my 4,320 appraisal is correct for the other 70% of the stock market. But when you throw in 30 PEs, even higher PEs on these other FANG stocks for the other 25, 30%, you can see how you can get a market like this accelerating as long as those five, six, seven, eight businesses keep going. So at the end of the day, the problem people are having here and, and misreading this bull market is you have to have two stories in your head and get both right. One is what are these eight companies going to do and how well will they get ahead and how much can the market buy them, which has been far more bullish than people believe probably will be. And then what's going on with this probably 18P average uh, economy stock market for the other 452 companies in the S&P 500. And you can see that's confusing a lot of people because who would believe eight companies would do this much lifting 
And the answer is they just are because it's a market cap weight of index. We're talking here on uh, Friday, August the 27th of 2021. Earlier this week on Tuesday, there was a an emergency G7 meeting dealing with the entire Afghanistan situation. Was it surprising to you that that meeting was not a market moving event at all? No, Afghanistan has been with us in tragic form for 20 years, maybe 40 years, uh, if you want to count the Russian uh, intervention there. It's tragic on a personal uh, level if you're there or have family there, but the stock market isn't going to price uh, something like this in unless you see terrorist events actually matriculate into the United States itself right now, which I do not think is a very high probability in the market, probably is not pricing that in at all. And just thinking that once we leave here on next Tuesday, August the 31st, that basically the United States will seal off any access uh, to the ISIS people in Afghanistan to the United States and Europe. I think that's a fair bet, and that's, that's what Mark is betting on. Long-term interest rates slipping a bit. The risk rally has extended to oil and the dollar may be positioned to rally here going forward. What does all that say about the global markets and the global economy? It says that the G10 central banks are going to provide the liquidity to this market. I'm looking right now on August the 27th. I've got a 10-year U.S. Treasury at 1.33%. The German 10-year at minus 0.4%. The U.K. 10-year at 06 And the Japanese 10-year at 002 so basically, it's either negative zero or, well, we're just, you know, the sparkling candidate at 1.3%. Those are basically nothing. And that means nobody's going to sit in cash or bonds. And that, that's basically bullish, Terry. Okay. Let's take a look at some stocks on your watch list now. They include O'Reilly Auto, CBRE Group, and Canon. O'Reilly Auto is an interesting company to start off with. Um, this is a play for the used car, you know, rebuilding phase. You've seen and heard about people, you know, making a lot of money in used cars. That means they're going to make money on fixing them, keeping them up. O'Reilly Automotive is a $595 a share stock, Terry. $595. Wow. So, again, um, am I a buyer or a seller of stock like this? At the end of the day, Terry, I'm a seller, not a buyer. Because I've, if I've ridden this thing up from thirty or fifty or hundred bucks a share to six hundred, I have such a huge profit on the table that if this thing starts to, to put a head and shoulders better in as our chart, it's over for this stock. So what else do we have, Terry? CBRE Group. Yeah, CBRE is you know your giant manager of real estate. Now this stock, um, they're based now in, in Dallas, Texas, and I got a. $95 a share price, which is actually quite high. What I find fascinating about this stock, it was 82 bucks a share a month and a half ago. It's now 95 bucks a share. One of the things that people are really getting wrong about the COVID, post-COVID environment is that real estate is going to tank. The market doesn't think so. It might be the case that the opposite happens, that people in real estate, they may have to put investment in to upgrade properties that have been vacant, but in fact, it looks like people will, in some hybrid way, return to the office places and return to retail in hybrid situations. So hybrid doesn't mean empty. And that's been where the bulls have been right, is that it's actually working out decently. What was the third one, Terry? Uh, Canon. Yeah, Canon, um, this is your Japanese stock, right? Now, what's interesting about ticker CAJ is this should be the tech stock. This should have been the one of the three. That's really moving ahead. It is $23 a share, Terry. It is you know, four times cheaper than, than you know, your basic CBRE story. And it's, I mean, $23 a share versus $600, crazily different than O'Reilly Automotive. So the question is, why don't people buy this stock? It should be a tech stock. It is a growth stock. It has a B score for value or growth now. And people are simply not buying the stock. So you got to ask yourself when bids get looked at in terms of buying Canon. And again, if I were to buy the stock, the VGM score is A. I would 
think about Canon as a long-term holding, I would certainly look up as the best of the three that we've talked about today. Chief Equity Strategist and Economist John Blank on the global markets and economy. With John, I'm Terry Ruffalo. This material is being provided for informational purposes only, and nothing herein constitutes investment, legal, accounting, or tax advice, or a recommendation to buy, sell, or hold a security. Do not act or rely upon the information and advice given in this podcast without seeking the services of competent and professional legal, tax, or accounting counsel. Publication and distribution of this podcast is not intended to create, and the information contained herein does not constitute an attorney-client relationship. No recommendation or advice is being given as to whether any investment or strategy is suitable for a particular investor. It should not be assumed that any investments in securities, companies, sectors, or markets identified and described were or will be profitable. All information is current as of the date herein and is subject to change without notice. Any views or opinions expressed may not reflect those of Zach's investment research as a whole.